one of the arguments you've been advancing in the last few years is that you will never be able to defeat inflation until you tackle the trade unions, which I think is the argument behind the rigidities of, of wages. Mm -hmm. And you, do you take the view that more needs to be done? Well, I'm quite sure, yes. Uh, that uh, particular and effective prevention of all use of violence by pickets must be carried through in all strictness. So long as there are possibilities of workers prevent other workers from working, I think we still have an intolerable position, which is not compatible with an operating market system. Does your liberal individualist society have any role for trade unions? And if so, what is it? Well, no doubt, if I were owner of an enterprise and trade unions had not been invented, I would invent them. I would have one somebody to talk to on behalf of the workers, but I would not tolerate them taking any exclusive monopolistic control. So far, collective contracts for the people who want to accept them are all in favor. But of course, the whole problem is that the trade unions, particularly in this country more than elsewhere, in the course of time were granted privileges which the ordinary citizens has not. Essentially, various uses of force and violence in order to prevent other people from working with the terms that they work. And I am convinced that in a functioning market order, trade unions must have no monopolistic power of any kind. So you would outlaw the clothes shop you would presumably also insist that trade unions uh, must be answerable at law for any actions they undertake, yeah. uh, like other citizens. And the underlying principle here, I, I suppose you're saying that people have a right to undercut other people's wages. That is a human right like any other. I'm sure they have. I don't see how you can possibly morally justify it. See, it is not realized to what extent Present trade union powers leads to an exploitation of a large part of the workers by the others. And one of the most extreme forms of it is that by driving up the wages of a particular group far above that of others, these groups uh, attract most of the available capital because the more expensive labor becomes, the more it's worthwhile to replace labor by capital. This is a result that capital is attracted to those industries where wages have been driven up fastest at the expense of the others. The mass of the workers can't get better equipped and therefore cannot be made more efficient by investment, because the investment goes all to where wages are highest already. So you're saying that trade unions cause unemployment? I'm sure they not only unemployment, they keep the wages of a large part of labor low. Why then do they continue to be um, so widely supported? I think in Britain, for example... just don't understand it. I mean, the things are evidently too difficult to understand. It's a naive idea that you can, by fixing wages, drive up the wages of all workers, still prevails, although it should be obvious to any intelligent person that any uh, wage above a competitive level must mean that some people earn more at the expense of others who don't get employment at all. But I notice that, for example, recently in America, some defenders of unions have argued that by increasing uh, wages, they compel companies to be more efficient than they would otherwise be. In other words, that they are themselves part of the cold blast of competition. But see, that's exactly what I've been saying for a different form. Yes, it is true that where wages are pu pushed up most highly, the firms are compelled to invest much more than they otherwise would and therefore to adopt technically more advanced things. But that happens at the expense of labor elsewhere. Capital which ought to go to the industries where the labor is least well equipped by capital is diverted to the industries where labor is already 
equipped with a great deal of capital where wages in consequence of that are pushed still higher while the workers who need assistance from capital most urgently in those which are still little mechanized are deprived of that capital. But I wonder if there isn't a change coming up. For example, in the United States recently, labor unions have agreed contracts which actually reduced their wages and benefits uh, under the impact of recession. And in Great Britain, again under the impact of recession, mm. the labor unions, trade unions, have been prepared to uh, abandon restrictive practices, which in many cases had been there for 30, 40 or 50 years. Well, they are beginning to see it, but I don't think you can really compare the two countries. In the United States, the <laughs> I have said, and I think it's still true, the unions are really a capitalist bracket, <laughs> fully accepting the capitalist system and just trying, on the imitation of capitalist monopolies, to get a local gain by enforcing a local monopoly they have not inspired by any legal, uh, any labor theory, any uh, ideology. The English are still much too much tied up with an idea of changing the order of society altogether. Uh, American trade unionists knows that he's dependent on competition, just wants to protect himself, but he knows he lives in a competitive society. The typical English, English trade unionist has a contempt for competition. He thinks competition is something unfair and unsocial. And this attitude is, as far as I can judge, still very strong. I think in England it is a question of converting the workers to admit their market order as a principle.